Good morning from the Spanish steppes here in Rome, the eternal capital of the Roman Empire. Here you will find 136 steps and it was built in the 1700s. Its purpose was to connect actually the Spanish embassy to the Vatican. This is the original purpose, but now as you see it's one of the most touristy places in Rome. So it's a beautiful day and it's sunny. I was thinking just to go on a casual stroll. The weather is so nice, so it would be shameful to waste it. It's lunchtime soon, and as you know, Rome has four pasta dishes that are classics. Uh, the carbonara, amatriciana, cacio e pepe, and the less known one, alla griscia. But since I'm really hungry, I was thinking I'll try the carbonara, and if I am to try carbonara here in Rome, why not try the best carbonara? Recently, at another YouTube channel, Alex, uh, went to try what he claims is one of the best carbonaras uh, in Rome, in a place called Luciano. I was thinking I'll just casually go there and check it out. However, before we go there, there's an old lover I have an appointment with. Um, she's been waiting for me to hit her up. Now that I'm here, I just have to say hello. So let's go meet her and then we can grab a bite to eat. It's a very unique time to travel to Rome because usually those streets are packed with tourists. But now there aren't barely any tourists. And the tourists you can find here are actually Italians who take advantage of the fact that finally they can visit their own capital without, you know, being flooded with foreigners. And, you know, one of the perks of Rome, I think it's one of the only European capitals where you can just stroll in the middle of the winter, it's January, and enjoy amazing weather. I mean, look, the sun is shining. It's 13 degrees. The entire week, it's been amazing. In most other European capitals right now, it's freezing cold, it's raining, and it's just impossible to travel, but not here in Rome. I think this is one of the biggest advantages of, uh, of Italy in general and Rome in particular. As you can see, the restaurants are just being opened. Tables are being set because lunchtime is upon us. The most sacred hour in a day of an Italian is lunchtime. When I wrote this ex of mine, she was super excited that I'm here in town. She actually told me she can't wait to meet with me. We met a very long time ago, and it was honestly a love from first sight. And every time I'm here, I just have to see her. That's how I am, a romantic, what can I say? Look at those old Fiat's. Che belline che sono. Wow. Let's go after them. of Rome. Now that is what I call the hot wheel. Go. They're not going anywhere. It's just a show-off stroll in the city, I guess. But now my old lover is awaiting. Ciao. Oh, there she is. Look at her. Never getting old. Mm. 
my old ex. Never gets old. Have you ever been here? Let me know in the comments. Beautiful. Yet another great contribution of Italy to mankind. Ciao! How are you? Bene! Te bello! Bello bello! Bye bye! Buona giornata, ciao! Such nice people. That's the thing, Italians, guys. They are genuinely nice people. So easy to start a conversation with them. So easy going. Gotta love Italians. What can I say? This is something amazing about Rome. You stroll around and amazing art is everywhere. Just lying there. Such as this beautiful, beautiful little fountain. So this statue, guys, is called Il Facchino, which means the porter. And it's one of a series of statues that were moking just local people you'd see around the town back in the day. It was built approximately in the year 1580. Just look at it. And these type of people back in the day, um, they would go around with the barrels, fill them with water from Tiber River, and then sell it in the street. And here it is, just... <laughs> here in the middle of the sea. By the way, the water from the fountains are extremely fresh and you can definitely drink from them. So this is our friend, the Facchino, the porter. Ciao bello. I didn't order a table and it is Saturday, um, but I'm hoping that since there aren't many tourists now, they'll have spontaneous table for me. Just some 3,000 year old Roman remains you know, just a regular sight here in Rome. Wherever you go, ancient Roman remains. Okay, it should be here. Oh, there it is, Ciano. Buongiorno. Posso? C'è posto per per uno? Scusi. Per un'ora. Ho il tavolo per un'ora. Va bene. Sì. Grazie. Guys, here it is. Grazie mille. Um, okay, so what we have here? The signature carbonara by Luciano Monosiglio, which is the what we are here for. Posso ordinare? Prego. E vorrei la carbonara. Perfetto. Così semplice e basta. Ok, l'unica cosa per quanto riguarda la carbonara è che ha 16 minuti di cottura. Ok. Vuole mangiare qualcosa prima? No. Ok. Ci Vuole... sono. Vuole bere qualcosa? No. Perfetto. Grazie. It takes 16 minutes to make the carbonara. Uh, which means we wait. And uh, it's a good sign. It means everything is fresh, everything is made especially for us. And they take their time making it. So what makes a good carbonara? The quality of the pasta is the first thing and as Alex learned in his movie to make a good carbonara you need to use the water of the pasta and to do that you have to have dry pasta not fresh pasta high quality eggs and the meat the meat of the carbonara has to be guanciale which is the cheek which is the cheek of the pork and of course you need amazing pecorino cheese to make a good carbonara the best pecorino cheese. They gave me only a fork and that's because this is how Italians eat pasta. 
They eat it only with a fork. Spoon is a big no-no here in Italy to eat pasta with. I, I love it. Don't get me wrong, I eat pasta with spoon all the time. But here they will look at you very weird if you eat pasta with a fork and a spoon. And a knife is also not an option. So you basically need to eat it with fork and that's it. Grazie. Grazie. Okay guys, here it is. This is super exciting. Okay, it smells delicious. Let's try it. It's so creamy. Wow. Can you hear it? That's the sound you want to hear. Okay. Let's try it. Oh, I'd love a spoon right now, but no. so good. Let's see how how's the meat. Okay, the meat is uh, not the regular carbonara meat you would you would find. It's not as um, crunchy as you usually get, which is weird. It's it has a very strong taste of pork. Mm. The pasta is of course perfectly made, very chewy, but look at the texture and the colors of the sauce, such perfect yellow. It's just divine. Yes, this. I think it's worth it's worth the visit, it's worth the price. It's extremely tasty, extremely well made, extremely delicate, full of taste. One of the best carbonara you're gonna have. So highly highly recommended. Let's try Luciano's tiramisu. Need to break it in oh there we are. Need to break it in the middle for everything to get mixed. So good. Hmm. This is another reason why you shouldn't order sometimes antipasti. Because when you order antipasti, you usually don't have room for this. Lunch can't be completed without some delicious coffee. So good. Coperto, as you remember, it comes instead of tip. It's 1.5. Carabonara, 18 euro. Tiramisu, 9 euros. Uh, water, 4.5 euros. And espresso, 2.5 euros. For all, 35.5 euros. It was so nice to stroll with you in the sunny streets of Rome today. I hope you liked this little trip. And see you on the next video.